Hey guys, so tonight John is filming. He has been filming for the last two days and he has one more day to film tomorrow while I am home recuperating. So um, that's why John isn't here today. And before you guys accuse me of clickbait, the, the title is what we're talking about today. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, we have about another week another week maybe a week and a half at the most left here in Florida and so this as you guys remember this is the most reliable our internet has been on our trip um, absolutely the most reliable it's been and so it's been really easy to do the live shows while we've been here and hopefully you'll excuse me I've, I'm still sick so hopefully I need to go look and see if you guys can even hear me um, <clears throat> Hold on a second while I, I don't know, why do I always have to feel so stupid when I try to figure out how to get in here? <clears throat> I'm going to try and remember how you get into the viewing. Um, so I can't actually see what you're writing to me right now. Hopefully you can see me. Um, my brain is really, really fuzzy. And so, um, hopefully, let me see if I can see if I can see what you're writing. Um, <clears throat> okay, so everybody can see and hear me. <coughs> Thanks, Heidi. So we'll see how I do with talking for this long. I probably should have brought some water in. That would have been a really good idea. Um, so what we we're going to talk, oh, okay. So we'll be here probably for another week and a half. And from there, we're going to be traveling almost consistently until we get home in April. We are going to be having a few extended stays, which would be go for green living. We'll be there for a little while. If we get a chance, we'll be looping up to Doug and Stacy's. And then we're running back to Danny and Wanda's in order to clean out the RV. They will be keeping the RV and Danny's going to do some really fun, big projects on that. And so um, when we left it, I didn't get a chance to clean it up real well. And we still have quite a bit of stuff in it. And so we are needing to go and clean it out and take stuff to Goodwill if we don't take it with us just so that it's out of the way for Danny and Wanda. So that's kind of part of the plan. Um, it's probably not a good day for me to be on a live show by myself because I'm trying to remember what I needed to talk about. And um, let's see. Okay. So Tangi is getting together our website right now. I was going through photos from the last few years on YouTube of things that I filmed and everything for her to put on the new website. And it was super exciting to go through them because um it's really exciting right now in february is usually when i'm getting all my seeds started and we're starting to get kind of amped up a little bit to be having babies born and so it was really fun to go through those pictures and having been out on the road it has really reinforced my what has always been my opinion that the most powerful thing you can do politically and health wise for your family is to grow your own food and that I really do think the homesteading is the most important thing that people can do. Um, to just to ensure quality of life for ourselves and for those around us. Because while we've been on the road, our bills have been a lot higher than they were back home. Even though it's been a wonderful experience, I'm not complaining. Um, the, the quality and the quantity of food that we could grow on our little farm our little one and a half acre farm was enormous and we did it for very little cost and it was healthy it was fun for us to do i have so many cute pictures of the girls being so happy with their bunnies and with their baby goats and everything and in fact the video i'm editing for tomorrow um, is actually one that i never put up that was of me talking about my new method for creating food forests in our difficult climate. Our climate, we have three 
months of growing season. And um, now that I'm in Florida and you have like a 12 month growing season, with the exception of maybe those hot summer months where, where things start to die off a little bit, looking at my tiny little three month growing season and seeing just how much food production came out of all those hundreds of fruit trees that I planted and our raised garden beds and our greenhouse and our quail and our ducks and all the other things we were doing. And I, it was just me doing it. It wasn't like my girls weren't much of a help. They tried, but they really to all intents and purposes weren't a huge help with that. Um, John was working full time at working 12 hour days. So he wasn't around to help. It was just me. And, um, and I have an autoimmune disorder that makes it difficult for me to do those things sometimes. And yeah, I did it. And so for me, the most exciting thing to teach about is about gardening and animal husbandry and cooking from scratch. And it was so exciting to look at those pictures. I did want to cry a little bit when I looked at my home cured bacon and realized that I didn't have any of that with me. That was really hard. That was a hard picture to look at because my home cured bacon is beautiful. Um, but get back on track, Julie. What were you going to say? Okay, so the point is I don't know how many live shows we're going to be able to do between here and getting home because it was very, very difficult along the way getting here. Do you hear the screaming children? So I, we have a couple little girls that come over and play. And sometimes they have screaming wars, but it still kind of sets your teeth on edge where you hope that nobody actually got hurt. I hope they come get me if something's wrong, because there's been times during the last few days when we've had all, all these kids over playing where you would swear somebody had just died, and then it turns out that they were just pretending to be horses. Um... What was I saying? Um, and so it was really frustrating getting here to where we are now to try and set up a live show and then to have it not work. It was really frustrating because we felt like we were having people come on to watch the live show. And then when we tried to set it up, it wasn't working. We felt like we were wasting people's time. And so I think that we will be doing live shows while we're still here in Florida once a week, like we always have done. But I think I think after we're done here in Florida, we're going to have to kind of cancel our normal live show that's part of the Homestead Network because we can't promise that we'll be reliable. A lot of times we were going to Wendy's and we were trying to set up the live show from there and it was hard to have the show because we were in a restaurant and sometimes we would try and run it off of our 4G on our phones and sometimes that was reliable. Um, but a lot of times it had a lot to do with timing and it was really hard to find Wi-Fi in order to get our designated slot in. And so I think I'm going to have to talk to Brad about that and just say, to all intents and purposes, if when we get home, but, but the problem is even when we got home, our Wi-Fi there was not strong enough to do a live show. So I'm not, I'm really not sure what we're going to do about that. And I think what's going to end up happening along the trip is that when we're in a place where there's Wi-Fi, that's when we'll do a live show when we know that we have a strong signal. And for the rest of it, we'll probably just have to be like, we we can't kill ourselves trying to get these live shows on, especially if it's irritating because the connection's not good. Um, and so I, I think, and, and I, I kind of think that a live show where you're kind of showing something like the Niagara Falls or something is a little more exciting than seeing me sitting here in a trailer rambling. And so hopefully, hopefully that kind of fits in with, with everybody else's plans because there's not really much I can do about it. Some of the places that we're planning on staying will be the Airbnbs that we will be trying to film. We've seen some very interesting little houses when we've looked up on the Airbnbs that are inexpensive to stay in, but they are things like grain silos. There's people who've turned um, grain silos into affordable living spaces or um, semi-subterranean little houses, things like this. And so I would assume that a lot of those places they'll have Wi-Fi. So I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking that's where we'll have our most reliable live shows. 
So I'm going to go look and see if there's any comments that I've missed. Um, <coughs> let's see. How am I feeling? So Cool Cat asked, how am I feeling? I am brainless. John is doing all the filming right now because I'm not safe to be driving. Um, I'm having a really hard time with my short-term memory right now to be able to uh, think quickly enough to be driving. Um, Oh, so so Doug and Stacy said, love trailer rambling. I, you know, does it seem like I ever do anything but ramble when I'm a live show? It seems like that's all I do. Um, let's see. Weetree said, as long as we have videos, we can roll with it till you can do a live stream. Well, and I hope so. And and I think it's super fun. Like if you guys remember when we were on the coast of, we were on in Northern California on the coast that we did that little bit of a live stream off of our phone showing the girls reaction to the waves. I thought that was like the epitome of a fun live show. Um, and so I really think that as we come to cute spots, if we do find a way to do the Wi-Fi, which we kicked up our 4G, I'm not sure if I'm using the right terms here. We kicked up our digital information on our cell phones really high while we were on the trip. So that if we had to do a live show from the road, we could. And because it's so high, we almost always have enough um, enough of whatever it takes to make a live show to be able to do it without getting fees. And so that I think if we do like five minutes at a time of, of a live show, as we hit something that's really cool, I think that'll be really fun. Um, so Rain Tree said, yes, I, I say do a live stream when and if you're able to on your own time when it works best for you. I found this to be much less stressful. Yeah, it's really, um, for me also, I run out of content. If it, if, if it hasn't been a while, if, you know, if I'm making daily content and then I'm talking to you also once a week, I really worry that you're kind of getting too much of me and whatever's on my brain is kind of overkill. Um, Rhonda said, grain silo living areas, interesting, multi-level yurts. Yeah, kind of. Um, we tried to get into one in Oregon, but it had already been rented out. It would have been really fun to look at because they're all over the Midwest and all over the West as well. And and a lot of times they're empty now, but they're very sturdy. So Susan said, hi, Julie, I'm sick too. I know what you mean about being brainless. I know that I think that's the worst part of this is that I physically I'm not necessarily besides the cough and everything. I don't seem to have a lot of symptoms, but I can't, I'm having, I have a hard time thinking through a sentence and editing has been very slow. Um, my attention span is just really, really short. Rhonda Welker said, I love that live show. Yeah, that I think that was my favorite live show was the one at the ocean. Okay, Doug and Stacy said, Heidi, I think the Homestead Network is no more. They're not putting show times on the website anymore and peeps are just maintaining what times they had. Well, that's interesting. I haven't I haven't looked at the Homestead Network recently, um, and I haven't heard anything about it. Ventress Ardvark said, "Your voice has gone low. Are you trying to be sexy? People might complain." That's what the girls said too. Isn't that funny? Um, recently, one of our family goals that we have been working very hard on is that um, family singing. That at night when we have family scripture study and family prayer, that mom will get out her old fashioned hymns and her old fashioned like dance type songs and I will sing. And since I've been sick, my voice has dropped very, very low and has been very gravelly. And Kaya really likes it because she thinks that I'm singing the blues in a very grainy way. But it's just the fact that I'm still sick. Obviously, this isn't what my voice normally sounds like. But it does make my singing voice much more fun. I always wanted to be a baritone. Um, let's see. Let's see. Off-grid, Doug and Stacey said, chemtrails, how are they in Florida? Actually, there's like all sorts of signs of about the chemtrails here. <coughs> Pardon me. I haven't, I don't think I've necessarily seen them, but I do know that when I was with Danny and Wanda that they talked about it a lot there in Mississippi. I don't know very much about them. I don't actually know what cloud seeding is or what it means. Um, oh, I'm missing, I'm missing conversation. 
Let's see. Okay, strate strategic tactical says, can you sing Deep River? My home is over Jordan like Clark Grissom. No, but I can sing um, uh, Swing Low Sweet Chariot. I, I have a, a mean Swing Low Sweet Chariot. It's really good. Um, sultry. <laughs> is it sultry? To me, it just sounds really nasally. Um, how are the chemtrails? Okay, so is that again, how are the chemtrails in Florida? There's billboards up about all over the place about people complaining about it, but I don't know if I've seen any. Um, I, I've kind of been head down editing so much that I actually don't spend a huge amount of time outside during the daytime. Um, Thanks, Rhonda. Rhonda said, nice to see your smile and sense of humor. I got all dolled up for you guys today because I haven't had any makeup on for a few days. And actually, there's a funny story, um, if I can remember it. Uh, I don't remember why, but Kaya said, oh, Kaya came to me yesterday morning and told me, Mom, I taught myself how to braid in the nighttime. I had my eyes closed, and it was dark, and I just braided this pony's mane, and I knew how to braid. And she looked at me and she said, Mom, would you let me braid your hair? And um, <laughs> it was so stinking cute because she really did. She taught herself how to do a French braid in the middle of the night in bed with a My Little Pony. So we went out on the lawn and I was in the little chair, this normal sized chair. Paige wanted to get in on it. So she was braiding one half of my head. Kaya was braiding the other half of my head. And Kaya comes around. She, Kaya had been fiddling with something in the back for a while. And she comes around and she looks at me and she says, Mom, I think you need to cut your hair because it's it's too hard for me to braid like this because I can't reach the bottom of it. And I thought it was funny that she would complain that my hair was too long to braid, but it was super fun. Um, John actually got a video of it that I thought was super, super cute. Hey, Palmetto, how are you? <laughs> I don't know if I can. That's really embarrassing. Strategic, I don't sing in public. I sing to my kids. Um, I'll think about it. If I can If I can make sure that my, um, unfortunately, my sinuses are a little congested, and so I don't want to, I, I don't want to sing if my sinuses are congested because then my voice will crack. Um, oh, no, Susan, that's not what I want to hear because the reason I'm sick is because of mold. So Susan said, my voice has been deep since I was 12. The, had bad reaction to mold then. See, that's why I'm sick is that the bathroom here that we use, see, we don't have running water here in the trailer. Um, we don't have plumbing of any kind. So we go to the other house that's down the way to use the bathroom and the shower and the laundry. But that house is full of black mold. And it seems like that's what is actually making me sick is the black mold. And I don't want to hear that. Um, uh, Rebecca from Flying VS Farm said they often cloud seed here over the mountains when we've had a tough year water-wise. Not this year, though. How interesting. I don't think they're doing that in Idaho this year. We have so much rain up here. We tree, do a video of singing that. Um, okay. So, Cat Lover, are you taking off? Hey, guys, I can't stay long, but this is the last live. Well, thank you for coming, Cat Lover. And I still have that video for you of the girls opening their package. They're in love with it. Um, and we have it ready for you to look at. Um, so Barbara Nelson, bye y'all. Nice live chat. Hope to see more. Gotta go. Thanks, Barbara, for hanging in there. Um, cool cat said, home cured bacon sounds amazing. It really is amazing. It's, it's something that it's very much more concentrated in flavor and texture than normal bacon. At least ours is, um, Ours is cured long, long cured. It's not, it's not just smoked. With ours, we, we smoke it and then we hang it for a long time after pa packing it in salt. <coughs> and so the texture is very stiff. <clears throat> and we use it more as a, as a flavoring agent than as something that you would necessarily eat as a piece with breakfast. And so I make a lot of chowder with it. Lots of scrambled eggs with small pieces of it, and it because it's intensely flavored, um, and it's a beautiful, it's very beautiful. And we also have home cured hams that are the prosciutto that you can eat in its raw pork because it's been cured. That is the best food in the world, and the smell 
is like a really amazing cheese. The smell of home cured hams is incredible. Uh, yeah, I don't want to hear that, Susan. Um, Trisha's having the same problem. She has black mold in her stomach. Um, <laughs> Adventurous Arvik says, I was getting, I was out getting the garden ready before I came in. See, that's what's going to make me crazy is I know if I was home, I would be starting my garden now out in the hotbeds in the greenhouse. And I know a lot of you are actually starting your gardens in the ground right now. And that is so exciting. Yeah, they would, cat lover, they would love to see a video of you sewing them. They absolutely love those little bags and the little, the little vanity mirrors and everything. They're so incredibly, they love them. They love them. Um, let's see, Susan said, I was out this morning in container gardening. Hubby just dropped a 36 inch diameter tree perfectly. That's exciting. Um, so for everybody that doesn't know, Susan Sullivan won the giveaway. And I'm trying to figure out the, at first she just wanted me to make her something. And finally, I talked her into actually picking something and picking her colors. And now I know what it is that she wants. And she actually wants something in mohair, which is my favorite fiber to use. I love to spin it from the lock. But you have to have an exceptional fleece in order to be able to do that. And... Um, she told. She still told me I, I should just make some, make something or whatever. But I really want to make her the one that that she wants. And so I don't know what it'll do to the light. Let's see. Whoa, that's. I don't. I can't see yet what the light did. <coughs> Hold on, because there's a little bit of a lag. Yeah. So John's home. John's home. Thank you. And so, um, so what I'm thinking is that what I'll do is it what Susan won was in two parts. She chose something off Layman's catalog and then she chose the handmade item by me. And I'm so I'm gonna send Susan the the item I can order and then I think I might wait till I get home because I have a special lady that grows mohair in my area and I love the color of what she grows and I oh it's so nice. And it would allow me to um, take a little bit more time on it rather than being Trying to find something substandard while I'm still on the road. You have two angoras. So Sullivan Family Homestead says she has two angora girls and she loves her goats. See, we have never owned angora goats. We've only ever owned milk goats. But I'm seriously tempted. I We just don't have enough room. That's the problem. On one and a half acres, everything we do is food production. Um, and, and, and it has to be at least dual purpose food production. Like I did spin and use the wool from my sheep because my sheep had babies and we would eat the lambs. But it's hard to do that with angoras, but I love, I love mohair. Um, whoa, I, I missed something. It's not capitalized, you didn't. No, I did, it was capitalized. And Cool Cat says she wants goats. I want goats too. One of my friends from back home is selling her herd that I helped her get established. And her goats are as nice, if not nicer, than mine. And I, I'm anxious to to nab a few of those goats before she sells them because they're, they're irreplaceable. Okay, which goat is the one that is better for sensitive stomachs? Um, so Sodbuster Living asked that. It, to my opinion, what really counts is your bacteria count. When a goat has a high bacteria count in their milk, the milk goes bad faster. And also, in my opinion, it's not as hygienic. But I also think that it really affects the flavor of your milk. Our goats have a very low bacteria count, and I think it made their milk sweeter. So I think it doesn't really matter which breed of goat you get, as long as they're easy for you to milk, the milk tastes good to you, and also you've had some vet checkups done on them to make sure that they don't have any communicable diseases and um, and that kind of thing. Let's see. Okay, so Heidi from Rain Country Homestead said, not planting outside, Rebecca, just in the greenhouse and preparing the outside gardens when it's not pouring. That's exciting. So Sodbuster Living said, I want goats, but hubby who grew up with goats and goat milk is allergic. Yeah, you, you could try sheep. Um, I like sheep milk. I actually like it better than goat's milk. So Rebecca from Flying VS Farm said, Sheep are my next goal. I love their dispositions and want wool to process. Um, 
Sullivan Family Homestead said, how do you feel about kinder goats for milking? In my opinion, if I'm going to have a goat, babe, I think that sound is going to carry. All right, um, how do you feel about kinder goats? I like to get the biggest bang for my buck out of a goat. Uh, a small goat does need a huge amount, but a big goat doesn't need that much more than a small goat. And so I like to have a goat that gives a very large production, is very healthy, never gets mastitis. I will not have a goat on my farm that gets mastitis ever. No mastitis allowed. And there are goats that are predisposed to have mastitis. And it, it also has a lot to do with bacteria count. How well they fight off infection. So the breed of goat that I have is alpine. But I also only get goats from a certain herd. And none of those goats that I had ever had mastitis or any other kind of health problem. Um, and I was very careful about that. So strategic, ta strategic tactical said, where are you guys at now? I'm not in Idaho. Um, yeah, cool cat. The, uh, we're in Florida. Our next step is that we're going to go up to Georgia for the tiny house convention and see what other people are putting out in Georgia. And then we're going to Alabama to stay with go for green living for a little while. And then we go to Mississippi to see Danny and Wanda and clear out the green. See, I'm starting to remember things. Yes, we're going to Danny and Wanda's. I already talked about it. Hmm. I already talked about it, so I could keep talking about it. Hmm. <laughs> to go clean out the RV. And then we're going to, from there we have, we, if we have time, we'll stop up at Off Grid with Duck and Stacy. We have some other places where we might stop off, but then we need to kind of scoot home pretty quickly after that. Okay, so Sodbuster Living said sheep. Yeah, I could spin wool. I'm not a huge fan of the goat's milk, so maybe I would like the sheep better. I like sheep's milk a lot. They don't produce much, and they also have a very short lactation, and they also have very short teats. And so, I, but I love the flavor of sheep milk. So Rhonda Welker said, I forgot to use caps. Are you going back home to stay and start working the farm again? Um, we don't know. Our, our livelihood is tied up in the type of videos that we're making right now. One thought that I've had is that if we go back home, I could go out on weekends and do filming of other farms and interesting things that people are doing. But... Um, our, our livelihood is tied up in this right now. People didn't want to see my gardening videos. I think my gardening videos are the most important videos that I make, but people didn't want to see them. And by people, I mean people other than my fans, like my lovely people who are here in my live show, people who've been with me for a really long time, people who've watched the old videos, they know that that's my first love is, as far as filming goes, is the gardening videos. But... Gardening is not big enough to support my family. Alternative lifestyles are big enough to support my family. And so my hope is that John will be able to find a job that he really loves um, and that will be able to stay uh, home and hopefully be in a tiny house on the property and still keep renting out our big house. And if I go out on weekends or if I go out one week a month and really pack in the video so that I have a lot to stretch out through the month, I think I should be able to still make a living and yet have most of my videos be about gardening. Uh, that's my hope. Um, if, if it comes down to it and then most likely what will happen is that I'll go home and I'll get a job. And um, because I'm not willing to be traveling the way that we're traveling now. When you've got kids, you need to, this has been fun, and there's no harm, no foul in us having been gone this long, but it's. I don't believe that it's appropriate for kids my children's age to be traveling as much as they are without friends and without the farm animals and the healthier food. And it's expensive to not live on a farm. It's really expensive not to live on a farm because in order to get that quality of food and that quality of life from moving and exercising that way, I think, it, you, you know, you think homesteading is expensive, but being unhealthy, eating unhealthy food is much more expensive. 
Let's see. I missed something. <coughs> okay, so I missed some I missed some comments. Let's see. Sorry. There it is. Let's see. I'm going to scroll up a bit to see what I missed. Mr. Rain just walked in and I did not see any cinch hair clings, so he must have gone okay with the fire starting. Did you get I did you guys do a video on it? I saw a funny video from Arms Family Homestead today that was kind of along the same way that they'd had some forest service fires started or something. Um, hey, Mr. Phoenix, do what you have to do. I just hope you have time to do what you love. Well, and and I love the fact that with gardening and with the animal husbandry and stuff, not only is it what I love to do, but it's what feeds my family so well. And I hope what raises my kids to be really happy and contented with their childhood. Um, let's see. Where's Helios? Somebody said, hi, Helios. Where is he? Did I miss it? Oh, I wish it wasn't so hard to make this stupid program work. Where is Helios? Oh, it won't let me scroll up. If you're there, Helios, hello. I just finished your um <coughs> your second hat in a in a bit. I have it ready to send to you. Let's see, back home we have quite a bit of flooding going on. And then Cool Cat Carolina said, Yes, traveling can be very expensive. It can be very expensive, and I think it's expensive a lot of times because of boredom. I used to travel a lot for work, and without fail, it seemed like I spent more money than I made because I didn't have the people around me that I wanted to have around me. I didn't have my garden. I didn't I didn't have everything that's kind of established that helps you feel like I have roots, I'm established, I'm safe. So I always spent a lot of money when I was working on the road, and this is no exception, is that um, a lot of the things that we would necessarily maybe use to entertain ourselves or to make us feel safe here we don't have and for me safety is goats and and so John is having to buy a lot of really strange groceries for me <laughs> I'm going through a lot of kombucha lately I don't usually drink a lot of it but I have while I've been sick and it's actually helped a lot but um, when you're traveling it's hard to keep a kombucha scoby going I don't know if you guys ever thought of that but hard to take your scoby out with you to a filming location because it would die in the hot car <coughs> and so um, I, I I think a lot of it has a lot to do with the emotions of traveling as much as it does the actual cost of fuel and and lodging. Um, hey, Mr. Rain, I'm glad you didn't get scorched. And Mr. Phoenix said, right, free eight range eggs are like four dollars dozen here in Maine, and milk for organic is crazy prices too. I'm sure they aren't crazy prices only here. Getting quail and ducks this year. Thing. I know I so miss my ducks. Um, here, how much was it for a quart of goat's milk here, honey? Seven dollars for one quart of goat's milk. So needless to say, I haven't been drinking milk. The girls haven't been drinking milk. But the last couple of days I've been sneaking John's milk because I'm trying to get some uh, mucus going. You know how when you're sick, sometimes everything dries up and you just cough a lot? Now, for context, a gallon of the crappiest milk around is still four dollars here. So dairy is quite expensive. Oh, Mr. Rain doesn't know what I'm talking about. So, Mr. Rain, Heidi was talking about how she's glad that you're not singed. Do I have, do I have strawberries in my mouth? No, no, you got it. Okay. So, Pudley Sparks says, thanks for all the information you share about farming, family ideas, alternative medicine, your mom's advice, your adventures, air hugs. Oh, thank you, Puddles. I love air hugs. Um, <laughs> Sodbuster Living says, Rain Couple, I'm laughing so hard. Yep. Okay, so Sullivan Family Farm said, come out for a visit. SMH, it's disappointing. What does that mean? Yeah, what is SMH? We, we see it a lot. Do we? we? appreciate that. But, yeah, it's like sad. I don't know. I don't know. SMH. We could come out for a visit to a lot of things. But John's the one that handles that. So a lot of times if... if if you have a handle here, but a name that we know from email, I have a hard time putting the two together. 
Um, so email us at dirtpatchheaven at gmail.com and say, hey, this is my handle. Just want to say hi. Susan said I need a breathing treatment. I probably do because it, it is that point where I'm not well yet, but things have really dried up. And so now it's just really stuck and deep. And it, it sometimes comes out and surprises me how sick I still feel. Oh, it means shaking my head. Thank you for educating us. Yes. We do appreciate it. What do they call that? The Urban Dictionary? <coughs> Mr. Wayne said, I didn't set it on fire. You didn't set your hair on fire or the forest? <coughs> yes. Both of the above. I love the Zilla people. Yay, we love Zilla people. Yeah, Zilla um, was awesome. Zilla was awesome. We found the Church of Godzilla up there. What? Do you remember? The Church of Godzilla is up there. Not kidding. It's an actual church. Okay, I'm trying to focus on comments, not your silly No, I love twitness. it. Zilla was awesome. So Mistress Phoenix said, my daughter just walked in and said, that's the dirt patch lady now sitting. Hi, little one. Um, what is like gumbo? What's gumbo? That's the meat. Um, Plain Deus Farm said, Hi, Julie. Essential oils in a pot of hot water with your head over the pot with a towel on top. That sounds like a really good idea. Hmm. We, and we're having to boil our water anyway, so. <laughs> okay, so Heidi would have been impressed if he could have let the forest on fire because it's been really wet there. Yeah, that. Well, you guys are kind of over getting close to the coast. I bet it's kind of wet there all the time, though. Okay, so Sullivan yeah. family, they're over on the other side of Gatlinburg on the way to North Carolina. And we're not going that far this time, are we? I can check the map. I will. No, we are. We can't get into the Carolinas. I would love to because I'd love to drop by and I'd love to see it after Ignatian. But, yeah, we're not going to be able to make it on this round. So, for that, we need to hope for part two. Which is really sad. We're so close. I mean, like, Lego is so close. I don't ban people very often, but I don't really get it when people come on knowing what the live show is and, and then come in. That was vindictive. That's the first person I've ever banned. I must have a very low tolerance right now. Um, okay, Ad Adventurous Aardvark said, all roads lead through Tulsa. <laughs> that is true. Actually, you know what I the, think would be really fun? The road fun? to Dutch, the road to arms. The road to everybody. <laughs> um, one thing that I thought would be really fun as we're leaving is if Shh, you're giving away places and names oh, of that? people. They all lead through Tulsa. Go ahead. I'm having a hard time with train of thought anyway, honey. I'm sorry. Go ahead. One thing that I thought would be fun is to go back, because SV Seeker, while we were there, said that we could come and work on his boat. And we have another friend there locally that maybe we could come and stay at, like, maybe a rental or something and hang out for a bit and go work on the SV Seeker and maybe learn how to use a nail gun. That's something that I've been thinking. Hey, Nelson Homestead. Oh, Carolina, sorry. I was going to call you on the way home. And then it was like I was putting my life in my own hands by being on that road. So. Rhonda Welker said she's up in Washington State. See, and we're, we're thinking that when we get back home, if I'm making a once-a-month trip and gone for like a week, I don't know how I could do that much driving and, and, and actually get filming done. But I am planning on doing a lot of traveling there in Oregon, Washington, and California because there's a lot of interesting things to film there. And so for all the people that we missed, there were so many people we missed in Oregon and Washington. It just broke my heart. We didn't do a very good job of letting people know beforehand what state we were going to be in and what area we would be in. And so a lot of times it was after the fact that we'd been there that people would find out we were even in the area and we missed so many people. Hey, Kimbo. Um, 
And so <laughs> he just said, I'd settle for rabbits, chickens, or unicorns of your expert choosing. The girls would definitely go for unicorns. Um, okay, so the closest that it looks like that we're going to make it to the Carolinas is Savannah, Georgia. Huh? There was a question about somebody who was really close in the Carolinas. And the closest that we're going to make it is up I-95 to Savannah, Georgia. <clears throat> and then we're taking off across I-14 <coughs> toward Atlanta. So. Did you guys lose me? Can you see me live? I don't know. Sodbuster said that she lost me. Hold on. I'll pull it up. Good. I don't know. We just do so awesome. Okay. Does anybody else want to say anything? Okay. So Susan says that we're still here. Thanks, Susan. Um. <clears throat> Thanks, Kimbo. Kimbo said he's praying for us. Oh. And the dog is for us. Okay. So off grid with Doug and Stacy. That is what the big question is, is that we're we're going through, we're going up to Georgia, sorry about the dog, we're going up to Georgia around the 3rd of March, and then directly to go for Green Living after that. And then we're going to Danny and Wanda, but then we need to aim straight upward, which means that if we have time, we can still come to Doug and Stacy. We're going to really try. We're going to really try. Really, really, it really all just try. comes down to timing. We've had so much moisture back home in Idaho that we can most likely stretch it out a little longer than we thought we could as far as the trip goes because there should be enough moisture in the soil that the trees won't start to die by the time we get home and get the watering system set up. But that's really kind of how everything lies is will there be enough rain in the spring that if we don't get the watering system set up immediately, the beginning of May, that it'll still be okay. Is that John squealing? Were you squealing? <laughs> that was probably John the children. I missed something. Bandana said something funny and I missed it. The other thing that would be super fun is that um, Minpan is a view is a view. A view is a view. I still want to do a mukbang with her. So want to do a mukbang with her. And it sounds like she might be moving to a space that we're actually going to, which would be the making of my life. Is that so funny? She's so, the way she eats noodles, for somebody who can't eat noodles, watching somebody eat noodles and enjoy them the way that she does, it makes me feel like I can eat wheat again just to watch her. And so it's like if I could find some paleo noodles and she and I could do like a hot noodle challenge together, would be so exciting my husband thinks I'm so weird but he can eat wheat so he doesn't understand the level of like I have to be careful about what use I, words I use because some people get so offended when I use certain words and so I'm not going to say them <laughs> are we going to Appalachians fair we are not we will not be around for that and because we're not Appalachian in nature, we couldn't we couldn't really yeah, do anything. Qualify. We couldn't really do anything with them because our growing season is so different from an Appalachian or Southern growing season, and so um, we won't be going to it. But primarily just because we won't be around in May, we'll be back home setting up the watering system. But <coughs> pardon me. Okay, so Mr. Phoenix said, "Are rice noodles bad for you?" Yes, I can't eat any grain. I can't eat quinoa, I can't eat rice, I can't eat anything like that. I can eat starch from root vegetables. So we've had some kind of good luck with um, mung bean starch noodles. Which are, Pardon me. which are an oriental. They're an oriental food. And um, we've done reasonably well with them, but we haven't been able to find them in the form that we found back home. The ones we found around here are not very good. And so we haven't really eaten them much. Doop, doop, dup. Okay, I'm missing things. Is that Doug? Uh-huh. I don't know, Mr. Rain got it. Oh, the, oh, Le I Lexi said, it. I love your gardening shows. I miss your gardening. I miss my gardening, too. I've been going th back through all my videos. I have a connection to an old uh, to the hard drive back home that I could pull videos from that I haven't edited. That I, I made all these videos just before we left, and then I didn't get them edited. 
before we left, and so I have a ton of videos I could do, um, but it's really hard to get files of that size through the interwebs in a timely manner. It's just there's not enough of an upload download speed thing. And so mostly I'm just looking at old pictures and feeling a little bit sorry for myself. Um, what did Mr. Rain say? So BC Trucker said, got a swamp rat, getting it finished, and tomorrow I'm going to build swamp rat, little brother, swamp mouse. Is that a boat? The truck. Or is it a truck? I'm guessing a big truck. Caliber said, I'm glad you're feeling a little better, Julie. I am. Today's the first day. Like, I, I have a few, I had a few hours in the middle of the day where I wasn't feeling good. But I feel pretty good right now, So, which is a positive from the last few days. Sodbuster, zucchini needle, noodles, that is an, a fantastic idea. I haven't actually tried it yet. Um, <clears throat> right now, we don't have a kitchen. And so anything that we cook has to be done on one skillet. And elaborate meals are very difficult to create, which is a total cop-out. I should have just gone out and got another hot plate, so we had two. But I didn't in the beginning because I was trying to save money. And um, there are kitchens at various places on this property, but they're not in the house. And so it's difficult to wash dishes in one place and cook with the oven in this place and then cook on a stovetop in this place and move the food between those different places and feel like bugs aren't getting into it and that kind of thing. So we just use the one hot plate here in the in the trailer. The girls wash the dishes in the sink that's outside. I'm missing so Did many comments. Get, yeah, the comments really kicked up. Bandana, Bandana Grandma says, noodles, I cut up spaghetti squash in my scrambled eggs with peppers and onions and loved it. It extended the food in a healthy way. I like that. that awesome. See, and what I love to eat, I love to eat summer squash with sliced onions and cook and saute them in butter that is like my soul food and when i was a kid that's what we would eat all summer long we had a really big family and so when my mom would 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 grow her garden zucchini and patty pans and crooknecks were all a huge part of her garden and we would live on on summer squash um john makes a really really good acorn squash um where he'll uh Roasted in the oven with butter and some honey drizzled on it. And that's incredibly good food, too. He did it last time in the pressure cooker, and it turned out really good, didn't it? You didn't try any. I'm the one that ate it, wasn't yeah, I? Yeah, you ate it all, which was good. <clears throat> I'm not much of a squash. Yeah, John doesn't like the squash. Man, he doesn't like well. he doesn't like like peasant food. Peasant food is not up his alley. Um, um, Mr. Rain said, Heidi is drawn to knives like moths are drawn to a flame. <laughs> okay, so Dan said, portable dishwasher. No, it's not a portable dishwasher. We have a child that is a portable dishwasher. We move her from inside the house to outside the house to go wash dishes. Um, Rain, Rain Country said, I finally tried spaghetti squash like noodles the other day and loved it. I've never tried it like noodles. I've tried it like to steam it in its in its shell and then put spaghetti on top of it as if it was noodles like that. That My mom tried to feed that to me, and I didn't really see it as much of a substitute. But I think that my palate has matured since then, which I, I now am a very big fan of peasant food, which would be squash and that kind of thing. Um, I can't say I don't like peasant food. I like... A bowl of oatmeal about it. You don't. Months. You I don't do. like oatmeal. I will take, okay, Cheerios. <laughs> yeah, he'll eat Cheerios, and that's Cheerios. his peasant food. <laughs> it, it's so BC oh. Truckers makes knives. That's really cool. Kimbo said, can you eat curry, turmeric, cumin? I can, and John actually makes really good roasts and lamb roasts. Like, Mr. Dirt is a magician with meat. <laughs> Huh. Mm. I don't like to experiment very much with meat or it really any kind of food. I want it to turn out well so people will eat it. So I make it, I have a tendency to make it bland and very normal-ish. Whereas with, John will really just get out everything he thinks might possibly go with it and he'll cake it in there. Like he'll actually make like, like this encapsulation of seasonings. Like you can see it as a crust on the roasts. And when he makes lamb roast, 
You've never had better food. It's incredible. I think I do a better job with rabbit than he does. But yeah. if it's a fatty meat. Yeah, I don't like rabbit that much. Sure. You do I like rabbit that. when I make I it. Rabbit. But he does really fatty, big chunks of meat. He does a really good job with that. And I think I do a much better job with anything that's dry because I cook it slower. And I'm very careful about the fat to meat ratio and and the manner of, of cooking it a, a little bit more than maybe the spice of cooking it. Uh-oh, Rhonda's calling somebody fat. Um, let, so BC Trucker makes knives. I did not know that. Why did I not Are know that about you? Her? For Okay, Bandana Grandma said, for those who can't eat pasta, mixing spaghetti squash half and half with pasta spaghetti is another way to cut back without noticing much, really. That's a good idea. Bubba said, cough sounds bad, black mold. Yes, I have black mold. I am a Petri dish of black mold. And I feel like I can't do much about it until we leave here because I keep getting re-exposed. I'm really hoping that once we get on the road, I can do some cleanses for my sinuses and my lungs. Danny and Wanda's in the house. Where are they? Ooh. Hey. Deep Danny and Rhonda, Wanda. Well, oh, Rhonda, what, what were you saying? Danny and Wanda. Girls. Girls. Okay. Oh, I keep yeah. missing them. Dogs. Um, oh, girls. girls, have you had a shower? Girls, do you need to go take a shower, please? Have they taken a shower recently, or did I miss it? Um, okay, Rhonda said, okay, Mr. Rain, now I need to back up and see what I missed. There's a lot going on here. I know, I had to do the same thing, Rhonda, because apparently Heidi, <laughs> Heidi and Mr. Rain are carrying the show tonight and keeping everybody entertained. That for weeks. <coughs> Why do we even come on? <coughs> I know it's well, no, it's just it's fun to have them here because well, it's small, like right? I wish I could figure out how to make it scroll for me. <laughs> Artbark says you lost so much weight that shirt looks huge on you. Hmm. Where me? Yes, that shirt. No, I haven't you lost any weight. That shirt. I know, but I, I needed a shirt. Uh huh. Um, and, I, and tomorrow I will need a shirt, and there will be no shirt. Okay, so Heidi said, yes, Mr. Rain, you're a roll. Time to roll you back out to split that firewood. <laughs> Let's see if I can scroll. Um, oh, man, my YouTube froze. I'll try to email. Let, let's see. I'll try to email you, sis. Yeah, Mr. Rain says. Thanks, Kimbo. Exactly. Okay, so Mr. Rain, if Mrs. Rain likes knives, if I were you, I'd walk the line very carefully. Except old Alabama, I understand that Heidi's preferred tool is a cast iron Skillet, not a knife. Sure. So Actually, Deep South Homestead is in the house. We'll see if the rains can start to play off of the deeps, and deep it'll be rain, rain deep, raining in the deep. deep, deep rain in Makes the me deep. think of an Adele song. Wow. Oh, wait, there is an Adele song. But they kind of are, are both characters, and so it would be funny if everybody came in and just had a funny night tonight. Wait, where did it go? <laughs> yeah. Bonsai says, see what happens when you give your shirt away. I didn't give this shirt away. She stole it. So, yeah. I did. What happened was I went out to get dressed this morning, and John wasn't here to tell me no. Right. And my and shirt so, that see, I pulled. This one looks so nice and pretty. <laughs> oh, look. It's just my color, Texas orange. Um, <laughs> I, I went to pull my own shirt out. But it smelled funny. Like it smelled like I, you know how when you're sick, you sweat a lot and it just still smelled. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so I stole John's shirt instead. I can't figure out how to have it. Let me scroll. Yeah. Mr. Spanx says sharing is caring, Mr. Dirk. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I draw the But only with permission. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't I get it to go down? I want to read all the funny comments. Oh. Yes, there's Rain Tree with her uh, little thing. I her little. Throws. Should I? Should I? No, you're coming back. But yeah, take the pen out of your mouth for sure. It is. It's UT burnt orange. Yes, this is true. Deep, dirty rain. <laughs> That's right. It's the trifecta of homesteading seriousness. Um. Okay, let's see. Mrs. Rain, I watched your video on chicken fettuccine. It looks really good and pretty easy. I didn't see that one. I need to go back and look at that. Um, Sidebuster Living, <laughs> need to stop drinking my ACV on these shows. LOL. I do it because it's mindless and I guzzle a lot, but then I'm regretting this. I bet it went up her nose. Mm -hmm. That would hurt. Okay. You need to put the what? little thing in your hand down. It's causing a distraction. There you go. 
Okay. Okay, so Kimbo said, okay, I asked because it helps me so much. I'm limited as to what I can eat. Love lamb, goat, and rabbit. I'm limited too. And um, the one that I've done really well with is the, um, it's the mung bean starch noodles. And those I've done well with. I've, there are others, but they're way more expensive. And the flavor isn't as good. Like the black bean noodles and stuff that you can get at the health food store are so expensive. It's like $8 a box. We have tried them once. Once. We tried them once. Um, but the, the mung bean noodles are incredibly inexpensive. And so I think they're the way to go. But I also, I do think that the zucchini spiralizer is an amazing idea. Because you can make your own. You you know, when you garden in the summer, you can make you have your own and zucchini. You're not even having to buy, um, what is it called? Noodles. What happened with Wanda? Mr. Rain, have you received your chickens yet? There's so Hike with Mike is from Florida. So we are with you, Mike. We're in Florida too. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, poor sod, sod Buster. Her, her sinuses got a rotor rootering with apple cider vinegar. That yeah. sounds painful. Yeah, that sounds a little bit. Okay, so Ivan, what did you say? A woman built her own house. She wrote a book about it. And then Nancy Velvet said, I love rabbit. How do you cook yours? So the way I cook mine is I'll take a clove of garlic and I'll rub it on the outside of the rabbit and on the inside of the rabbit. And then I'll take a cube of butter and rub it over that. And then I will sprinkle it with rosemary and we will cook it for about how long do we cook it for? Mm -hmm. Like half an hour. I think we cook it for half an hour. And then I have a mix of honey, um, red cooking wine and a little bit of lemon juice and a teaspoon of powdered mustard and you mix that all together or no that's the duck recipe yeah sorry say, i'm getting my no, i know no, i'm I, brainless I like, no let's do the good rabbit recipe okay that was so the duck recipe she fry, she, we cut it up into little pieces and then fry it like that. <clears throat> okay so our favorite i this is i'm gonna finish my favorite recipe so and then after you've had it in there you take like a quarter cup of of red of any kind of cooking wine Wait, she asked or you good about wine. Rabbit, and you're gonna tell her how to cook duck. No, the duck is the one that has the the honey in it. The right. rabbit doesn't have honey in it. So let me finish. So a quarter cup of wine, a quarter cup of lemon juice, and then go ahead, finish. I think that's it. I think that's it. And then what you do is you take the lid off the rabbit and you turn it in that juice that's in the bottom of the pan every 15 minutes until it's done. The, the one that everybody loves the most, though, is fried rabbit. And what I do with the fried rabbit is I dip it in a mixture of buttermilk and eggs that are whipped together. I dip it in that. And then I have, by the side, I have a gluten-free flour mix that has seasoned salt, black pepper, and a little bit of normal salt, and a little bit of cornmeal. And I mix that all together, and then I turn it and then I have my deep fat fryer there with my homemade lard the heat has to be really high and I put it in and I cook it in there and it's to die for it actually tastes like fried chicken I'm really distracted right now so I hope I hope I haven't have I missed anything nope. when we do duck we take a mix of chicken seasoning like you know the seasoning you get at the at the store that is like the chicken seasoning it's not it doesn't have msg in it it's just the herbs that are the chicken seasoning and it's really finely ground and you put it in like chicken soup and stuff but it's not a commercial blend it's just bulk you take that and you take some paprika and some seasoned salt and some pepper and you mix it up and you rub it on the inside of the duck and then you rub it on the outside of the duck and you cook the duck i think it's like 45 minutes cook the duck and then you make up a glaze which is i think it's half a cup honey a quarter cup lemon juice and then a teaspoon of the ground mustard and you whip that together and you drizzle it over the duck and then every 15 minutes after that 
you pick it, you scoop it up and drizzle it over the duck again, drizzle it over the duck again. You can turn the duck. But it, the, this is a high maintenance recipe. It's a high maintenance recipe, but, but it's, it's like it it's like so mind blowing, amazing yeah. food. Like my girls, they can't decide if they like lamb better or rabbit better or duck better, but I think the duck wins. Usually, a lot of times. But most of the time, because it has honey on but it, they, so but, sugar feed. But they love the lamb. I mean, the meat that we make on our homestead never gets disrespected by our children. Because we have found some amazing recipes, but also the fact that it's clean meat. It never has an off flavor. I'm missing comments. Um, Danny says lamb wins down there. Amen. It is like, this is good. Yeah, we love lamb. Although, Danny, I think that your pecan crusted venison steaks really took the cake. Yes. That was Those so were, good. Yeah. And if, if Min Pan comes down to see you guys, I think that's what you should have her eat because I think it will seriously blow her mind. It's the best food ever. Uh, too fast. Okay, Kanzi says, we like to fry our rabbit in garlic and seasoning, make a vegetable stir fry, and mix it all in the stew. I've never yeah. tried that. That sounds so The good. first way that we cooked rabbit when we first started raising them was we did them in a crock pot and slow cooked them and it was not good it was so bad and i i don't know if it's because we we didn't really know how to butcher them yet and maybe i didn't let it bleed out as much as it needed to or or if it was that this that we just don't like it in a slow cooked meal but we didn't like it in the crock pot with a lot of juice in it we really liked it deep fried as like a fried chicken or we liked it with that basting but i don't think in the last year we ever found a recipe we didn't like rabbit in i mean we everything we cooked it in after we really got into raising them when we really put the production on and we were but maybe it has something to do with the food too because the last year we, that we were there i didn't raise any large animals to butcher we couldn't afford it john was hurt and so what i had done is that i seriously amped up our rabbit breeding and our duck breeding program and those were the only things that i was raising for meat and in doing that, I changed the way that I fed them. We didn't have hardly any commercial feed that we bought. We had 100 rabbits, but we were buying very, very little pellets. Like we'd, we'd buy pellets every two or three weeks. I was mostly feeding them out of the rabbit garden that I had planted. I had planted long rows of spinach and Swiss chard and brassicas and then i also had the raised bed gardens and anything that we didn't get to fast enough in our greenhouse or in our raised bed gardens i fed to the rabbits and i was also taking clippings from the trees they were eating a lot of crab apples they were eating all the all the trimmings from everything that i was harvesting around the property and so we had all these up and coming baby rabbits that were eating like strictly fresh food and their growth didn't stop. They were growing really, really well. But we were feeding, we were spending almost nothing on feed. Um, and so for people who are on a limited budget, which is what we were on, we were on a very limited budget because John was hurt. And we didn't have that much coming in from YouTube. We had a lot coming in from Etsy. It was going back into, into production costs. And so usually we would have been raising a pig. We would have raised two lambs. And you know that's what we would have been doing that time of year but but when those two two pigs died because i had too much on my plate <coughs> we we didn't have pork for the year and so i took what i had and raised the small animals and that i have to say that was the hardest thing about leaving the homestead was that i had all of this food that i was about to put into the freezer because it was fall and i was about to start butchering everything and instead of butchering it, instead I sold it. And that was really, really hard because I saw all my all my hard work that went into this really special meat leave the house. I'd already butchered, I think, in the neighborhood of eight geese. And we had put them in the freezer. And, um, and they were really good. And I was about to start butchering ducks. And we had just butchered some more rabbits. And so our freezers were really full just before we left. And I ended up having to transfer all that meat. I wouldn't sell it. I transferred all that meat over to my mom's freezer so that it was um, being used. Um, anyway. Can't go for a green just showed up. Hi. Hey, go for green. 
We're still planning on coming in the beginning of March. Well, she tell us not to. So. Uh, let's see. <laughs> the reins are against each other. I noticed, right? It's actually it's way more entertaining than anything we could provide. I so know. We ought to just like queue up a show and then just walk away, let them talk. <clears throat> okay, Mr. John Doe said, "Have you tried canning rabbit?" I haven't. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not big into canning much of anything. I think I probably need to repent of that. Um, we have made a large use of deep freezes and large use of dehydrators, but not a lot of use out of canning. I have canned my whole life. Um, and it would be really smart if I got back to that. This last year with John having been hurt and me keeping the farm going by myself, I didn't have a lot of time to be making sure that I had enough of a supply of anything on hand at a time to do a batch. That's the reason I didn't do it, is that I would go out and do butchering as I needed to, and a lot of times it would be like six, maybe seven rabbits at a time, which doesn't really make enough meat to really do a batch of canning meat. It would only make about maybe five, maybe six quarts. And so mostly there at the end before we left, I was just trying to keep ahead of making sure things made it into the freezer, making sure that I didn't have animals that had reached butchering size that were eating when I needed to have them in the freezer. That was pretty much what I was focusing on. Um, let's see. <laughs> so Candy said our best way to take the wild taste of out of buffalo and moose is to marinate it in ginger ale, and it is so good. That's a good idea. I wonder if something along the lines of like a wine. Well, I, I think lemon juice does that. Or too. lemon a juice. Lot of the fruit, yeah. Fruit uh, acids will help a lot. So that's awesome. And so I, I don't know. I feel like our last year before we left was a real testament to the capacity that by changing your focus, you know, say you still have a job, say you still have plenty of income coming in, what you're raising might be a beef or it might be a pig. Um, <clears throat> and so and that's what we were doing when we had two incomes we had YouTube coming in we also had John working and I was hiring people to do our butchering because I wanted it to be in smaller packages I wanted it to be more easy to access the food for dinners and I didn't want to be handling such big pieces of meat and then when John got hurt I wanted to be able to do all the butchering myself and do it very quickly and again not have to worry about big packages of meat but have small packages of meat and small amounts of food going in and thus the budget being smaller so I do think that we proved in that last year that um, it is possible even though we only had an acre and a half all the food that I was feeding my rabbits was coming from that acre and a half it was still feeding our family everything that we needed as far as green food went and even most of our fruit um, for fresh eating. We didn't have anything left over for canning. So that would be the difference. I was not focused on a canning garden. I was focused on a fresh eating garden and a fresh eating orchard just because my systems are new. My orchard is young. My This was the first time that I really experimented with a row garden and raised beds and a greenhouse all in the same year just to see what would happen. And um, I think that it was a, a rousing success. <coughs> Um, let's see, Flying VS Farm says, have you ever tried using a food saver type system? Is that like the vacuum packing? Um, I haven't ever tried that. Let's see. I'm not sure if it would work for any of our greens though, so. Not, well, greens well, don't, well, don't well, keep we, well like that. Things you want to put in the freezer are things like maybe. Well, well, I'm trying to think of what we would put in the vacuum pack. Probably meat. We have a meat would still need to be frozen. Right. Well, I think that's what she meant was the oh, food gotcha. saver yeah. system. Okay. Um, I haven't used that. I think my mom's used it a lot. Um, the last year, the last year and a half, almost two years that we were at our house, our fridge didn't work. And so it's one of the reasons I wanted to make as much yeah. fresh. It worked. It just worked too well. Yeah. Our freezer froze everything. And we were too cheap to no, just go and have it no, fixed. Our, our freezer did freeze everything. 
just like you said, but our refrigerator also did. Our freezer froze everything. Yeah, no, we, sometimes our freezer said, thawed. Our freezer froze. That's right. Our freezer our thawed. Freezer thaw and our fridge would freeze, and our fridge would freeze everything. <laughs> and <laughs> so being the cheapskate that I am, we never had it fixed. And so I'm just like, I need to grow a bigger garden so I don't have to put anything in the fridge <laughs> and have it freeze. Mm -hmm. And so... Sometimes when you think you're saving money, you're really just kicking yourself in the head. That's what I have to say is we should have just fixed the stupid fridge. Okay. So. Okay, so Rebecca comes back. We have one and we buy our meat in bulk and then divide it up for the freezer. That would be very helpful around here, actually. I think that would be an awesome idea. A lot of times what we'll do is, is if we, back when we were buying meat or something like hamburger, we would get the big package, bring it home, and I would either cook it and put it into Ziploc bags into the freezer, or I would separate it out while it was raw into Ziplocs and put it in the freezer. Okay, Mr. John Doe <coughs> has an excellent question. For your size family, so the four of us, how many rabbits and other proteins did you go through last year? I'm new to homesteading and also have a bad back, so I really can't get into the larger animals. Love your channel. Thanks, okay, John so what we did is we had four breeding does and we had two that were really reliable and two that were kind of questionable because they were young does and we were trying to get them on system and we only had one buck and with those animals we were turning out enough rabbits that we had um not enough not not as much manure as i wanted but enough to help us skate by um, I, I had just built two big new cages just before we left and they were full of babies and um, as soon as babies hit five weeks old we rebred the moms and then left the babies with the mom just a little bit longer to get weaned thoroughly but the other animals that we were uh, raising were our Muscovy ducks and what we did is that we had one Muscovy duck and one Muscovy dad and she would sit on her eggs and hatch out seven babies. And then I would wait until the babies were just a little bit older. And then I would take the babies away. And that was to keep them safe because the drake would try to kill them. They would rebreed. She would sit on another clutch of eggs. And, you know, six weeks down the road, I would take the babies away. So in one year, in one, in, in one three-month summer for us, that mama turned out three or four different sets of Muscovy ducklings for us. And um, and I would take them away and get them started eating other things and keeping them safe from the drake. And so we had somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 ducks that were from previous hatchings or, or we had got them free, but we had somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 ducks and somewhere in the neighborhood of like 25, 30 geese. And we got the geese either free or we got them cheap. The one thing I would say don't do is unless you can house geese far away from your home, avoid geese because they will keep you from sleeping at night because to all intents and purposes, they are guard dogs. And that's why we got them was to guard the ducks so that the ducks could sleep out underneath the fruit trees at night. And what they would do is they would weed and eat bad bugs underneath the fruit trees and aerate the soil. And if coyotes or foxes were to come around, they would alert yeah. very well. Yeah, the geese would go out after a coyote or fox or a dog or anything yeah. like that. The problem was, is when these predators would come by at night, the geese would see them and alert and wake us up and wake up the neighbors and it makes you not very popular. But the but the point is for the I, geese... It was people we weren't popular with anyway. <laughs> no loss. It was a loss. You don't want to be keeping your neighbors up at night. That wasn't a kind thing. It was, it was hard for me to see that we were <clears throat> keeping our neighbors up at night. It did yeah. not make me happy. Kansi's asking, have I thought about a fish farming aquaculture as a low maintenance in obtaining food and growing plants? We get so cold where we are that it is difficult to keep fish like that alive um, in outside of a pond system because it just everything freezes solid. And our family can't eat fish because I am mercury toxic. I had a pretty big overdose of mercury as a kid and so I can't eat fish and so that's the reason we haven't looked into aquaponics although I I I don't know of anybody that's done it successfully in my area I know people that have attempted it but because of the cold right. it's difficult it's very difficult I was gonna say, you would have to have a heater even in 
I guess in our basement in that big house, we could have gotten away with it, but it would still have to be a cold water fish with tilapia. And well, you don't want to have a fish system in your house because the humidity will cause mold in your house and it will smell bad. You want to be able to have it outside in a greenhouse or something. Um, and so the, the system that we built up was around the fact that I was doing it by myself and my health was not always 100% reliable. When I got sick, I mean, this is how sick I get when, when I get sick is that I'm kind of out for the count. And it needed to be something where I could go out and do chores and have it take 20 minutes a day and then I could come in and rest for the rest of the day if I needed to. So I could literally do all my milking and all my other chores in about half an hour a day. And then for the rest of it, I could send the girls out to check on animals. I could check on animals, but there wasn't any heavy lifting. And I could wait until I was having a really good day to do my butchering and to have these really big things that I had to do, like bucking hay. I knew that I would be out for the count for maybe a week after I went and got a couple tons of hay because I'd buck it myself. But I kind of planned that into the system that it was okay for me to go do these big projects and then take it easy for a few weeks. Thanks for stopping Thanks, by. Thanks, Okay, so I think we are ready to end the show because we've got kids out there too that I'm not sure what they're doing. So, oh, I don't know. This, they've, been, they've been silent, so I'm sure that there's nothing that could possibly be going wrong since they got quiet. Did you want to reflect, reflect your uh, – oh, Todd's asking if we want to head back to – or if we're ready to head back to Idaho. Um, I am ready to head back as long as we don't get there while it's still snow on the ground because we don't have anywhere to live. So um, we need to go get back when the when the climate is more temperate so that we have a chance to find either the tiny house that we're going to be living in or to build the tiny house we're going to be living in or get a temporary rental while we're figuring out what we're doing. So we have to wait until May anyway, just because uh, the weather needs to be a little friendlier when we get there. So. <coughs> I don't know. We don't have anybody on. So or, like I was saying, the, the, the likelihood of having regular live shows is not going to happen because we're going to be getting on the road again once we're gone from Florida. And so in my opinion, we will not be on the regular scheduled live show after we leave Florida, which will be after next week, I believe. And at that point, I am going to aim for live shows being spontaneous at moments when we have Wi-Fi rather than trying to kill ourselves to get to somewhere with Wi-Fi and then not having a good show instead having a lot of interruption. So I would say look for those live shows that are at Niagara Falls or in some other kind of exciting place when we have five minutes that we can use our, our data on our mm -hmm. phones. And 38,000 um, feet up in elevation and, and around Todd. So when we're in the stratosphere on one of those passes in Colorado. Yeah, when mom's barfing <laughs> her brains up because she's back in Colorado mountain passes and she's having PTSD flashbacks. Right. Um, we'll, we'll put it up live. <laughs> so, so I love you guys. Mini video. Good idea. So I don't understand. What is everybody talking about? All right. Well, they're saying goodbye. No, they were talking about something else. The live shows? Trailer ramblings are better. Uh, Third time's the charm yet, so that's right. Eventually we'll get off. Sorry, Heidi. Okay, so we love you guys, and we'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.